even if you know there's not going to be a carnival next year in Trinidad, we don't know what's going to happen for the rest of the year. Yeah. There might be a carnival in Grenada, someplace else. But stop, stop, um, stop tying your music to carnival. He said, yeah. Carnival, carnival is just the festival. It's the festival we live for. We love to play. But soca is so much more than just carnival. <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Shandel Shandy the Riggs, she is the what do I call you the 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 public relations head, the the head public relations person for Julian's promotions. That's the correct um the correct name of the title, right? The the public correct, one. yes, right, yes, good. Yes, and and yes. tonight we want to get into a discussion about the business of soca. Just to take everybody back one week ago. Um, I had Pretty last week. Shandy actually was in the conversation. He chatted for Pretty last week. That was supposed to be the business of Soka. That was not the business of Soka. That was the business. Yeah. No, I'm being real. That that conversation with Pretty was the business of life. It really wasn't the business of Soka. We had, it was a great one, though. It was really good. It was good. Yeah, I think it was good. I think Pretty was very insightful, and he said a lot of things that people will not want to see. And he was very truthful and transparent, which is what we're trying to encourage with this podcast. Because I want people to be able to understand the real meat of the business you know so we could come here and sugarcoat stuff and say well yeah xyz i'm making this i doing that but no i mean if it is that you're going through a challenge if it is that this is a challenge again involving this business people need to know because there are multiple people out there that want to become an artist want to be involved in soccer want to be involved in different creative industries and i think they don't really understand the challenges that persist with that so it's always good that we could get stories from people like you guys um, to understand, you know, the challenges that go into the business. And I, I will start off by asking one question. Now, funny enough, when I posted this, um, somebody's like, yeah, Shan, he's the first female. Uh, so, I saw that. I was just like, wow. And, so this is a lot of pressure here. This is pressure. It is a lot of pressure. Because you're the first female on the Creative Collective. But somebody told me, which was really funny, after they got the fitness mentalist for this, she was like, uh, I thought Julian was a guy. So, <laughs> Julian is a guy. Julian is a guy. Let's just put this disclaimer out there. Julian is a guy. We are a team. Right. I'm the public relations person, and Julian is the head honcho, as I call him. He hates it when I call him the boss, but he, I call him the boss. And the second thing there was like is like, where is Julian from? Is Julian Trinidadian, or is he from some other country? So they. That, that, I'm not gonna disclose. If he hasn't disclosed it, I'm not gonna disclose that. So, so Julian is not the type to to disclose what country he's from. Yeah, he's he just loves Caribbean stuff. He's All right. from the Caribbean. He's, so he's, a, he's a Caribbean. We're both American, but we have Caribbean background. Put so, it that way. Oh, so you guys are Caribbean people. You all are not yes. and St. Lucia and all these Car Caribbean people. Caribbean people, uh, yes. All right, okay, okay. All right. Um, as we continue the conversation, I just want to encourage you guys, if you want to ask any questions, feel free to put it in the comment section and click the question mark icon right next to it, right? Well, you can't see it here, but right next to it, right there. And shout out to some people that joined DJ Katash, my friend in London, um, Black Hearts, um, also Vibes Unlimited. And Mikul, who is always here, Sean, another another New Yorker, Trini, that's here as well too. So we're glad to 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 get everybody in the discussion tonight. All right. Um, so off the bat, um, I think Julian's promotions has been in the business of promoting soccer, um, on social media, or if you use social media mediums long before it became a big deal so i want to use an example there's a guy I follow on youtube called mkbhd i think it is marquis brownlee i think his name he's a a tech reviewer and he was mm -hmm. the guy that got involved in reviewing different tech uh, items when they now came out um before youtube was a thing and for as many as i can remember julian's promotions was doing this before it became a thing so for anybody mm -hmm. that's wondering where did the, the beginnings of Julian's promotions come from and how is it that Julian's got to where they are right now? Okay, so um, Julian would say, we, which I agree, we started back in 2006 with iMeme. Right. So I don't know if you guys remember iMeme. And I remember, I used to be on Island Mix with him and I used to message, you know, can you make this playlist for Vinci? You know, how will you describe um we have two different categories we don't use groovy we use raga soca and we use power soca right so he used to create playlists from there right. um in the beginning 
as we know, it was it was hard to actually find a central house for soca music. Yeah. So the I'm in playlist were the main focus. From there, it went to Island Mix and so forth. In the beginning stages, in those days, we just had Trini Juggle Juice and Island Mix and all those other platforms, but they didn't really, you know, have the meat of the matter when it came to, to soca music. That, that's so. Fun. That's fine yeah. because I really wanted to find out. Because I think for people who are now really into carnival culture and soca, because I believe both of those things are intertwined, at that point in time, what was the landscape of soca like, especially like in New York and, and America? Well, around that time, I would say, because we were pretty heavy within the New York scene, and carnival carnival wasn't like how it is now. You see how now everybody likes to carnival hop? Well, pre-COVID. Um, everyone used to carnival hop. And social media was a big blast where it got everything out there. Right. So from that point on, everybody wanted to jump on the carnival bandwagon. But back in those times, we were just like the main house. Like if you ever notice, if you go way back when, you check our videos, everybody focused on our videos because we did carnival coverage. I think I would like to, to toot our horns. It was just us and Trini Jungle Juice, from what I remember, that used to be out there promoting carnival culture. Right. right. And the soca music. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's funny because... They, and Island Mix. I can't knock I, Island Mix. Sorry. <laughs> I saw DJ Kata said, what she said earlier, I want to bring back this comment because we're sorry. They're the reason you'd know if, if I stole a song from YouTube. <laughs> Of course, because there used to be Julian's promos that, right in the background. No, yo, yo, yo. If you're a DJ, if you're a professional <laughs> DJ, right? Now, if you're an upcoming DJ, okay, fine. Okay, we can give you the blind. But if you're a mm -hmm. professional DJ, you can't be in the middle of a party. And as you're <laughs> a Marshall Montano, you hear Julian's promotion. No, dog, like you can't do that, man. That is, you, you can't do that. You see Sean and all laughing. Because I know at least a couple. Because it's the truth. I know a couple of DJs, professional DJs, I say. I ain't talking about the amateur DJs. I talk about professional DJs. Um, but I really do think that the last couple of years, there's been such an exponential growth of carnival culture um, across the world. What do you think has, has been the cause of that in, in particular? Oh, so many different things. I would say that from networking, just, just us networking with other different people. You know, I want to point out that we initially started as just a local New York band because we're based in New York. Right. A lot of people think we're based in Trinidad. I don't know why people think we're based in Trinidad, but I would, we're based in New York. I would, I would I'll tell you why after, but continue. Go ahead. Yeah, we're based in New York. And from networking, just reaching out to artists, because that's how we initially started. Um, we started out by reaching out to artists to just house these these songs, right. these list of songs, because we wanted people to get... We wanted... Okay, so it was just three of us that started this, this, this team, Julian's Promos. It's myself, Eva, and Julian. Right. And... Initially, when we started, this was from the heart, and we're still from the heart, 110%, and it was a hobby for us. We didn't think that it would just grow as huge as it has grown. Yeah. And through time, we, we networked. We reached out to people single-handedly, you know, hey, if we saw you in the street and we knew that you, you had a connection to somebody else, we'd connect with them. You know, for artist music, we'd reach out to artists one by one. If it had to be through um, Instagram, we'd reach out to an artist via Instagram. If we had an email address, we'd reach out to them via email. And we'd ask, you know, do you want to have your music up on our pages? And we'd put the, page, the music up. And from there, it just grew and grew. And everybody knew to get the latest music as pointed out come to us to, to see the latest carnivals come to us and we took pride in that and we still take pride in knowing that we're number one out there when it comes to these things is it is it, <laughs> is it funny when you go to an event and you hear a dj playing and in the middle of that track you hear julian's promotion tell them something <laughs> it, i'll be honest okay so one year in st vincent i was sitting down at a bar oh, good, sir. and i was i was having a drink i was having a sh um a, a juicy at the time and while sitting at the bar because I, I don't drink like that <laughs> if you were drinking while at the bar in Simpson, say, while I was at the bar in Simpson, you could say I was drinking huh? you could just I wasn't drinking alright okay because no I had to drive I had to drive I had to drive no problem, no problem. okay alright well, I was drinking Sunset right. so yeah <laughs> While there, I remember just hearing this this big old, you know, a nice, uh, it was a Marshall Montano song on. Right. And then I heard just in the background, Julian's promos. And I called Julian immediately. Like, what's it? Like, Julian, Julian, I heard us, I heard us. And he would just, you know, he's a very modest and quiet guy. He was just like, ah, whatever. And and that was that. But that's, it, it, it took pride. I took huge pride in that. I smiled, you know, near tears of joy because it, 
going to the next level in my eyes so to you, reach the Vince and hear that that's so the next level you're smiling tears of joy because a guy took your song off of YouTube and played it no it wasn't even that it was I, the fact I, that I, you know you know admiration I looked at it that way admiration and to all the DJs in the chat I'm quite certain all of them will say no do not rip your songs off of Julian <laughs> I'm sure no and a lot of you as you get there you learn not to do that and and I'm glad you pointed that pointed that out no no that's disqualification one time you know yeah I've been even love our party and you say yo so 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 yeah julian's promotion that is like no. but that's why we do the email blast and we encourage people when we send out the email blast to download the mp3 and that way you don't have to you know get that that issue when you download music from youtube yeah because any, any dj who knows when you download music from youtube it loses its quality slightly right it's not all there so you're better off just taking the mp3 we encourage everybody to subscribe to our mailing list and you'll get those daily it's daily blasts even in the midst of covid we were still sending out music a lot of people cling to us for the music and i think that brought comfort as well believe it or not yeah um dj lover boy big up yourself i swear i sent a message to kara and i will tell kara the same thing as well too because lover boy and i are thinking clearly so both of us on the same note when it comes on to kara um was it challenging in the beginning to get um the content from artists as compared to now because i always say that people in the beginning, whenever you're trying to do something, everybody's always very reluctant, you know, for whatever reasons. And then when you start to get bigger, all of a sudden, like, people want to send you stuff. You understand? Um, so it, was it challenging to get that content from artists in the beginning as opposed to, to now? I don't think it was it was a challenge. I, that's just me. I, I personally don't think it was a challenge for us to get it. Um, a lot of people were interested in learning of what the platform was about. Right. What is it we were doing? You know, if you those days, like I said, in I Meme, if you checked I Meme, you'd see the long list of music and people would be appreciative to know that, you know, we had so many followers even at that time yeah. go into our pages to check out the music. Yeah. So I don't think it was that hard. And then as we grew, of course, everybody... Can we get on? It was no longer us reaching out. It was them reaching out to us. And, and when that happened, it was just a big eye opener of how the platform changed tremendously. Yeah, I, I think YouTube has done such a fantastic job of putting different cultures in context of the world. Um, because and I, I remember having a conversation on my other podcast with some young DJs who weren't even born around the point in time when there was no youtube and there was no social media in that regard so when i dropped the question like could you imagine um starting a career without youtube men was like nah dog like i i, I can't see that I can't. <laughs> um because of the technical nature of this conversation tonight i'll get into more questions because shandy and i had this roving joke last week that people really wouldn't be interested in hearing the business of soca now but i think that, that mm -hmm. we're going to prove that wrong tonight so somebody's asking how do you get your music on julian's promos as it is right now okay so normally i get this question a lot as well um what i usually tell people to do first of all if you have our number um you can catch it on youtube we have it under their pages the pages there we ask clients to email us to wave their MP3 files to our email address. And then from there, you know, we'll work with you. If you have artwork, you know, don't worry. If you don't have a proper picture, we'll try and format it for you to the best way and have that picture running in the background of your songs. Right. So just email us at julianspromos at gmail.com and, you know, we'll take it from there. And that is that how you get on the mailing list as well? Because I saw somebody. Yes. Of that earlier. Um, that was culprit seven five eight one. So how do you get to Julian's promotions mailing list? We also have on our on our um because we have a, a a URL. Sorry, I'm I'm losing my words here. If you go to juliansPromos dot com, right, then we have a subscription list there. Just click on subscribe, and then we ask a couple of questions. You know, are you a DJ? Are you an artist? Are you looking? What are you looking for? And then we'll try to curate a list for you. Are you single? So yeah. Not single. No. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just asking. Just asking. Um, what one of the things I think I hate the most about the creative process as an announcer and as a DJ is the mathematical breakdown of how to look at social media. In the sense mm -hmm. of I was and I was having this conversation with again a friend of mine who's here, the fitness mentalist the other day, in terms of the social media algorithm. Um, you know, you're going through Instagram times to post, what to post, etc. 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 I hate that. Like I literally cannot stand that. But I understand 
that to be able to be effective on social media, you need to be, under, be able to understand how your content is reaching whoever, et cetera, et cetera. How mm -hmm. much of what you guys do on YouTube and your social media streams right now is statistically driven, being that you post at particular points and times, you know what songs you want to post when, or is it more important just to get the content out at this point in time? Algorithms are very important. Whether you like it or not, it's a science to it. Right. Um, if you, we always encourage people to note, you know, because we get calls of, there's a package option that we give, which is email blast and YouTube upload. Right. So normally, you know, I don't even know if I'm supposed to even give out this secret, but I'll give it out. Normally what we do is we upload the song first. <laughs> we upload the song first to YouTube. Right. Or we'll do the opposite. We'll send out the blast. You no, know, we'll, we'll put the song up on YouTube first. Let it, you know, marinate a little. Let people catch it and see where it goes from there. After that, we'll give it a couple days, maybe, and then we'll blast the song out just to generate more feedback from people. Right. The algorithms are very important for us. The algorithms determine when to send out a song, when to keep it um, a little bit longer, and then push it back out right. just to generate that, that kind of um, feedback from the people. Right. We also encourage people to comment. The more you comment on the, uh, a song the more it stays and it fluctuates and then that generates more of an algorithm as well because it's keeping the repeat repetition over and over again. Right. Same way how me and you will comment under a picture or under a video. Uh, are you here yeah. still? Oh, okay, because I thought I lost you. Like if we comment under right. a picture or a video on Instagram, the comments are what keep it resonating and people would see it on a constant basis. So the algorithms are very, very, very important. But, but even with that regard, and, and this is now where we get into technicalities in business. So that is why Shandy and I had said since last week that we're going to get into real technical stuff of, of, of music and, 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 and entertainment and soca here. So we want everybody to be patient because I think especially for DJs, um, artists who may tune in, you all need to understand this part of the process because I'm not learning on it. I, I hate it. I, ca I can't stand it, right? Um, Mm -hmm. From your experience, have artists and, and just entertainers in general, have they been concerned with the statistical part of uploading music and understanding when to post, how to post? Um, or is it that they just want the song out there one time? You want the honest answer or the... the now, listen, <laughs> we speak truth in the collective. The collective listen, I'll be the, honest. The I'll be honest. Not, we speak in truth in the collective. So if artists come and tell you, yeah, what's going on? My song and gameplay, all you, eh, be, 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 you could come out and say it. Because we in the collective. <laughs> so I'll be very honest. Most artists just want their music out. Right. They, most artists do not care. They just want their song out. Right. They want to see the song there. They want to know that their song has made it onto the page. Right. And then they, from there, they can reshare. Right. Um... And I think I try to explain. Some people ask questions. A handful, a handful will ask questions. Right. And I think it's important to ask these questions that you're asking now. We try to encourage artists to learn the demographics of their pages, number right. one. Huh. Not, our, not only our pages, but their own pages. Because we try to encourage them to build up their own social media as well. Right. How do we get, we, you know, another question that comes up is getting soca music to the next level. Right. How do we do that if people don't know who you are as an artist? Right. So you have to look into that as well. Right. So it's important that we tell clients, our clients, you know, the artists, to look out, to try and build their pages, to try and build a following, to know what time your your demographics are there, to know what time your art your 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 clientele follows your pages. Yeah. Most cases we say twelve o'clock, new time, lunchtime, everybody jumps onto Instagram page or they go on because they want to hear music. So they'll go on to, to YouTube to to pick music and listen to. Yeah. So around twelve, six, those are like key key point times. Six o'clock in the morning, because people sometimes put on music on to to get ready for work if they're not listening to the radio or something like that. Right. We also um try to tell people to reshare their content. Go, you know, the first the first thing is your, your grassroots is what I call them. Your home base, your home base. You know, Julian tested me one time with my own um, YouTube page because I have a YouTube page and it sucks. I'm not following up. With it, but that's a different story. <laughs> that's a different story. I have a YouTube page. And initially I started with 23 followers. Right. Julian turned to me and he said to me, he says, I'm going to give you to the end of this day to gain at least 300 followers. I said, how is that possible? He said to me, 
you have how many contacts in your phone? I gave him the number. Right. He says, from that number, reach out to every single person and ask them to subscribe to your page. Right. And I was just like, nobody's going to subscribe to my page. Nobody cares about these things. Before I knew it, by the end of the day, I had 365 followers but, on my page. But here's the thing about that. And this is where I want to bring everybody in the, into the comment section. Right? So if you have a comment about this, especially about what I'm about to say, you all can respond and Shandy and I will follow in the comments. I have myself, um, I, I find myself in a very strange predicament where, again, trying to grow your following. And I'll give you the example of what happened there. there. A guy I know sent out a broadcast to everybody in his contact saying, yeah, well, I am renting equipment. This is my business, blah, 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 blah. Can you guys please support me by whatever, whatnot? And the blowback he got from the groups are like, why, why are he messaging me? Why are you adding me to a group? Why is he doing this? Why are you doing that? And I think for some people, it might be a little bit annoying if it is that you're receiving broadcasts or invitations mm -hmm. to groups for business that have nothing to do with them. Now, now I understand Julian's point and understand your point in terms of reaching out to people. And I could say from the creative perspective of being a DJ, it's always mm -hmm. been the balance in my mind of reaching out as opposed to just letting it slide. I don't know what everybody else feels about that in, in the comments, but if you all could comment about that, I'd really appreciate it. So I don't know what's your thoughts on that in terms of reaching out to let people know what's going on as opposed to letting it slide because more than likely people are going to think you're annoying. <laughs> so here, no, you're right. Um, first thing you said was you sent out a broadcast. Right. Well, he sent out a broadcast. Right. That's a no-no. That's a no-no. If you're going to do a broadcast, then you have to make it seem like it's a personal note you're sending. Right. So you start off with, hello, hi, how you doing? How's your day? Make it seem like it's an individual email if, or, or message that you're sending out if right. you have to go that route. But for most right. cases, I tell people, you like, most people like to feel important. They like to feel that love. They like to build that relationship. So as much as it's annoying to you or as time consuming as it may be to you, you have to reach out to each individual person and start a conversation. You can't just send out a blast. Yeah. A blast is impersonal. In my, in my opinion, blasts are impersonal and they, they don't do anything. Yeah. You get people that strips their teeth and walk out the group chat, like you said, or rock, rock, rock so out the so broadcast. So God established that people, people hear broadcasts. <laughs> you have, yeah, you have, to, you have to establish a relationship. You have to let that person, you have to hold a hand. And let that person feel that love, that warmth. Yeah. You have to start off, hello, how you doing? How's your day? Can you help me? Yeah. And in cases when you start that conversation, sure, I'll subscribe. But can you subscribe to my page as well? And that's where the community starts to build. Yeah, and I think people have to have to understand that. And I, I want to shout out Second Star, who also in the comments as well. I now see Second Star. I saw, I saw. <laughs> um, that even though singing the song... Um, putting out the song or be the DJ because correct me if I'm wrong, Julian's promotions also does blast for DJs as well. If you have a DJ mix, that's correct. So DJ, correct. if you have a mix out there, want to mix to get out more, Julian's promotions does that as well, right? Um, yes. I think and we also do reggae. Sorry, right? So we, we do re they do yeah. reggae, they do soca, and they do G um, DJ mixes. And I'm seeing here it's ma ma what's his name? It's Mac. Again, right here. If I had a promotion team like Julian's promo, my face would be everywhere in Trinidad. I barely get love that way. <laughs> that real sad dog. But no, I, I mean, I think, which again is a challenge for me. I think that DJs, artists, entertainers, and anybody in the creative field, if you are a painter, if you are a writer, whatever, whatnot, if you're trying to sell your services, as much as the talent aspect is important, people, people also have to understand that this part of building the creative and the personal relationships with individuals is work as well too. And I'm, I'm not going to lie to you and assure some DJs and, and, and entertainers inside you would say that. We're not really fans of that because you don't want to give feel like if it is that you're reaching out to people for fickle reasons you know you want to, mm -hmm. you, want to you want to actually say that you know there's a good friendship that you have with somebody as opposed to just jump on the train because you want them to follow you and then when they follow you don't take them on again after that so i don't know mm -hmm. if that is something that you also advise people to especially if it is they're trying to build a career how do they maintain the relationships with the individuals who they would have reached out to from the beginning that's a hard one. It is. That is a hard one. <laughs> it is. It That's a hard one. Um, big, big up this off, man. Yeah. I would say, ooh. 
to maintain it by any means necessary, as horrible as it sounds, by any means necessary. I always say find a common ground, stay cordial, stay patient. Um, it's hard. Yeah. I'm not even going to lie. It's hard. It's hard. Sometimes you feel like you have to eat your words. You're taking up vomiting. You have to suck it back up. But that's just the nature of the business. Like you always have to keep in mind you have a goal at hand that you want to uh, establish and accomplish. Right. And with that being said, sometimes you just have to eat your words. You have to sh just suck it up and go with the flow. Yeah. As much as you might not like it, you just have to. Yeah. That's just how it goes. I saw DJ Katash say, yes, um, this both can mutually help by subscribing if they exit the chat. Remember, so they can't ask for anything in the future. <laughs> they could be you can't do that. As much as you want to do that, you cannot do that. <laughs> That's just I'm not like, how it works. <laughs> and I say, I say Kerry. So, so I, I'm not going to call you BJ's name, but again, I don't. We don't have any conversation. I don't know you personally, and then all of a sudden, I just see a pair in a group in a group chat saying, "Yeah, dog." Um, so you can follow my page. Or, we don't talk like we don't have any. <laughs> so that's what I said. I think people have to have a tact with it, right? People have to. Have, is he mm -hmm. Kerry laughing? Kerry, you know what I'm talking about? But people, I think people have to have a tact with it. You need to have a tact with how you approach individuals, but understand that, as you said, your grassroots supporters are probably people that exist in your phone at that point in time, because at least out of the how much ever hundred contacts you have in your phone, 15 or 20 people probably might take you seriously. I, I don't know. I, I just say. And then from there, they tell other people, and then they tell other people, and then they tell other people. Yeah. And then eventually your product speaks for itself. Yeah, and I, and I always tell people, you know, use your group, the groups that you're into your friends. So right now, I'm, I'm a member of Zale. That's my t-shirt I've on here right now. And Zale has been really instrumental in helping me push a lot of these lives so far. So I'd send out a message, hey guys, tonight we have an XYZ. And they'd be like, yeah, mm -hmm. we, we tune in and I'll let people know who to tune into or whatever, whatnot. I'm seeing somebody say, is either they like you or they ain't. Yeah. Is either they like you or they ain't. Or oh, yeah, they have don't to like you just to what you plan to do. Nobody's supposed to do what. Uh, all right, okay. I'll try, try, try and read that. And Kerry was saying, um, yeah, do it and reach out, but not to do it in a weird way because yeah you, you will turn off people so what do you think but that's what i'm saying you have to do it real personal you have to make it real um real genuine yeah. people like to feel genuine they like to feel the love they like to feel important right that's just the way we are we just like to feel important and we like to know that we belong somewhere yeah so if you're trying to build you have to let people feel that love feel like you really need them yeah. as much as you don't want to admit you need them you need people we need people if we don't have people we will not flourish i agree with that I, th I think everybody everybody even if you're creative and whatever you do is like the greatest thing in the world you have to understand that you're going to need people at some point in time. You understand? Um, I see I am Kern Scott saying Trinidadians only support when, when you, you, you blow up. Yes. <laughs> which, which... You know, I... Mm, no, I, I go I, ahead, go ahead, go I, ahead. My, my, my <laughs> comment on it is this. I think that a lot of times in Trinidad and Tobago, we see people with talent and we will just give them the nod. Like, yeah, he real good, you know, but... Uh, he ain't reached there yet, right? Mind you, if you see him on stage somewhere out of the country doing whatever, when you come back, it's like, dog, real big things going on with you, boy. I have an event, I need to call you. La, 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 la. So all of a sudden, you just get any kind of appreciation that you wanted to get because you had to go to somewhere foreign to be able to get that kind of support and energy to come back home for people to realize that the talent that you had was always there. That's just my take. Can I I was just going to say, it's not just Trinidad, though. That's just Caribbean people in general. Oh, so you think it's a... And I'll probably... It's a Caribbean thing in general, because it's not just Trinidad that has that issue. Uh, I'm just going to keep it at that. Right. It's not just Trinidad that has that issue. Yeah. Um, maybe it's just this genre of soca, or it's just us as a people. Unfortunately, that's just how it goes. Yeah. Um, people don't take you seriously unless you expand outside of that bubble. And when you expand outside of that bubble, then it's like, oh, so and so is from so and so. And then that's when they want to click. Look, look, Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. Nobody really knew who she was. But the moment they hear she's Jamaican, they're claiming her. <laughs> just an example. It's a whack example, but it's an example. Yeah. <laughs> mind, you, eh? when, 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 mind you, when they went up and speak this issue as of, of Indian heritage, so. Unfortunately, I was see? I was waiting to hear them say, "Yo, um, I know she's from Jamaica too, or whatever." But <laughs> let's tell them. Uh, let's want to get to this comment first before I get to the next question. Hi from Barbados, I'm listening in. 
we are a vacation rental accommodation. Uh, we are a vacation rental accommodation, and when we check in, guess we all smart TVs. Oh, so basically, they're a vacation rental place, and they be using Julian's promotions. You understand? So that- thank you. <laughs> Um, so now we get to the to two questions, which I'll call the back and all questions, right? The first one is, oh. it, it's real simple. Has there ever been a song that Julian's Promotions posted that got more dislikes than likes? <laughs> like people hated it. Has that, has that ever happened? No, I, I, it happens. It's happened. So it's, it has happened. So, so when it happens that an artist posts a song and people are already not feeling it and again real bash, do you guys like reach out to the artist and say, yeah, well, I think you probably need to work on your production a little more. Um, you probably need to rearrange or whatever it is. Or is it that you all just leave it for transparency? We leave it for transparency. Right. Usually what happens is the client reach back out to us. In some cases, they ask us to take the song down so they can work back on the track and then come back. Right. With a better track. Right. Um, you know, we we don't judge the music. We let the music speak for itself right. and the people judge. Right. In some cases, people still don't care. Even if they have this amount of dislikes, let's say 100 dislikes and one like, right. they will still keep the track up there because it's their work of art, their masterpiece, and that's what they're at peace with. Yeah. So, you know, who are we to say we're going to take it down and throw it away? And, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's your work. Um, so the second back in our question, which is something you and I spoke about before we started live tonight, um, obviously there are ways right now to build monetary um, value from YouTube and other sources of social media. And one of the things that I have been asked many times before by individuals is that if you post a song on Julian's promotions, and let me say your track hits two million views, just out of you know just train out a number out there um there is the chance that some monetary value could come back through that um are artists able to make some level of monetary compensation from being able to engage julian's promotions to post content online so i'm glad you asked that question that is a question we get a lot Mm -hmm. (laughs) So the question, oh, so the answer to this question is we do not make money off of anyone's music because right. we don't own the rights to it. Right. So we can't profit off of content we don't own. Right. And that's just how it is. Um, the way the music works online is if a content owner has that right, they can either be the producer or the artist. The artist and the producer, well, mainly the producer has main rights to that music. And if the artist owns rights to it, then they can take it upon themselves to make it. Right. Um, they have to sign a deal with a digital distributor. And the digital distributor collects all the revenue on behalf of the artist or the producer. Right. Um, we started that initially. Um, we we're taking it further this year. But, you know, uh, a lot occurred. So kind of slow down from that. Um, no revenue um, shares through us unless we have to deal with the digital distributor right and the collection actually goes through them anyway so if an artist or producer that doesn't have a deal with an industry a distributor and submits content to us it's just lost revenue and that's never earned or gained because it's not being monetized which means there's no ad revenue being generated so no ads are being viewed and we only ins- assist in marketing and curation right we don't handle the revenue and i have to stress we do not handle the revenue it's, it's, um <laughs> every artist cup well not every artist not that. that's, that's your wrong thing to say but isn't that a lot of upcoming artists come to you guys and be like yes yeah, so um i want to post my song through julian's promotions and when the first million reach on the views or they go send my check now it's, yes <laughs> that, that happened. yes yes yeah. yes yes yeah. Yeah. I have to stress that. Right. Um, actually, you know, when we sent out the press release that we reached um, 1 million subscribers, right? our phone went off the hook because um, automatically people saw 1 million and they thought, okay, their song has also reached 1 million right. and they're entitled to a check. And it was, it was off the charts and bonanzas. I was just like, why would you think that, you know, and you have to sit there and explain, we don't make money off of your music because we don't own your content. Right. Um, we do have a structure in place where we could handle the revenue and we've tried to build our own digital distribution. That's what I've also explained before. Right. But, you know, 
we have a deal with one RPM. We have a deal with Spotify. We had those deals there. However, you know, we also have a competitor that also does digital distribution. Right. So we kind of held back on that because they thought we were kind of taking their clientele, which was not happening at all. Yeah. So now we're, we're sitting here trying to revamp how we could go about doing that because we know we have a lot of subscribers and we want to help people. That's what business is about. It's about expanding and digital distribution is the next wave the next form that we want to go through. Yeah. You know, we want people to understand we're here to help. We're not here to take away. We don't make money off of your music, but we do like sharing it. The only way we make money is through marketing. And that's when you call us for a package to upload your music, to blast your music. That's the only way we make a profit is through that. Right. So. right. And, and again, so a couple of things we, we want to, because during the course of the conversation, I'm just going to refer back to some of the points that we made. First of all, for DJs, please stop ripping Julian Promotions videos, songs, and putting it on your laptop on Serato and playing it. Please stop doing that. You can actually now join Julian's Promotions mailing list and get the actual song as opposed to going on YouTube and ripping the song and doing whatever it is. So that is one. Um, the second thing, what, what were you going to say? Go ahead, go ahead. So I wanted to add just one more thing. Oh. So, um, because it's just to piggyback off of what was just mentioned before, previous to that, um, the best way artists and producers can generate revenue via YouTube and other streaming platforms is to first own a good percentage of your own master. Right. And th that's a lot of, when you speak to a lot of artists, they don't own the masters. They don't even right. know what the masters of the music is. And I think that's important to, to remember to get a percentage of that. And then that way you can, sign up for the, the various distribution outlets to get money. Yeah, and the, and the reason why I'm having this conversation with you tonight, especially because of the 1 million views, and I'm going to get to that now, is that, and I'm seeing somebody just saying that they're not hearing you, so I'm not sure what happened to your microphone, so you probably need to check that. Can you guys hear me right. now? Yeah, you probably know, right. Yeah, yeah, good, good. Okay. Right, so um, the reason why I, I, I brought up that point is because a lot of times as creatives, we want to be able to control the content, but we really don't like to deal with the back end side of it. I, I, am, I am guilty of that as well. So as I tell you, I'm, I hate having to go through the details of watching my social media and see when to post and what to post and what. I hate it. Like, I really, really hate it because I just want to be able to do what I want to do and pray it out whenever it is I want to pray it out, you know? Um, but I do understand that because of the competitive world that we're living in with entertainment um, is really important now that people understand the statistics behind what they're doing. And everything is a science. I have a friend, Kenneth, who died a couple of years ago. And Kenneth used to say everything is a science. And is it true? When it comes down to this and all, it is a science as well. Um, so now to the 1 million um, subscribers on YouTube, um, mm -hmm. how significant for anybody who doesn't understand the significance of that. How significant is it that you guys now actually have 1 million subscribers on your YouTube channel? It's a big deal. Right. It's a huge significance. Um, I would say take heed to the fact that we have 1 million subscribers. I say we because it's not just Julian's promos. It's the artist. It's the subscribers. It is Soka Music in general. That is a huge factor. Right. Um, a lot of eyes tend to fall on someone that makes 1 million subscribers because it's just like, okay, so what is it you offer? And then from there, the conversation goes, what is Soka Music? You know, what is soca music where is it from who who are your biggest artists where can we go to invest in and make a big piece of the pie i think right. people have to understand that this was just a monumental moment a historical moment for all of us and we should all applaud ourselves and put up uh, you know give ourselves a pat on the back yeah that this can go i can't predict the future but it can go someplace further that we just don't know yeah. so you know it, it's a it's a huge huge moment I think about it no one a couple years ago knew what soca music was. When Kamala Harris won in Florida, mainstream stations were playing soca. Right. They associated her with soca and reggae. And that was a big step for me to know that they knew who the soca artists were. They were playing Palance. It was playing Masha Montana. They were playing a whole bunch of stuff. And I thought that was pretty cool that, you know, they knew this, this, was, this was the wave. Right. And I think that's so cool. And most cases, soca is synonymous with, with carnival. Right. So just know that as soca music gets plucked out, Carnival will be there. But I also have to stress this part. I, what I noticed 
even though people are our, our subscription list grew during the COVID pandemic, a lot of artists had to take 10 steps back because they realized there's no carnival now. Right. So music was coming in. It was, it was dwindling. It was, you know, sporadic here and there, but it was coming in. Right. However, it wasn't coming in in droves like it would as if it were a carnival. Correct. So for the artists who are on here, I just have to stress to you, please release music. Even if you know there's not going to be a carnival next year in Trinidad, we don't know what's going to happen for the rest of the year. Yeah. There might be a carnival in Grenada, someplace else. But stop, stop, um, stop tying your music to carnival. He's a, yeah. Carnival, carnival is just the festival. It's the festival we live for. We love to play. But soca is so much more than just carnival. Yeah. It's synonymous, yes, but it's more to it than carnival. Yeah. I, I, right now we're, we're in the pandemic right now. And so this is the time where I would highly suggest push out that music, push it out, push it out. And I've, I've been telling people that we have to get into the habit of not seeing soca as seasonal music. I think that has been the mistake that we've been making for years. Now I see um, mm -hmm. that's at a point that money is the problem. And I remember having a conversation with just Jay from Barbados and my other podcast for Groove Theory a couple of months ago. And you were saying that when you look at the business and the money of it, and to Katash and, and Ato, I saw the comment about Palance, which I'm going to get to very <laughs> shortly. So we go and discuss Palance very shortly. So hold on for a <laughs> But I think one of the biggest issues that comes into music, um, especially soccer, is the fact that money is really the problem when it comes to production. For you to get a tight production, um, if it is mm -hmm. that you have to get a writer to be able to put together parts of song, that's money. And if you don't have a season to be able to make back that money from performances or whatever, whatnot. And also because even though, yes, you can make money from streaming downloads, the money that you make back may not equate the amount of money that you put out into the production. It's going to be challenging for somebody to be able to find that cash and that collateral to put together to make a song. So I guess my point I'm making is that do you also understand the balance of where people would like to put out the content but the money is kind of tight to do it as opposed to now trying to sing music that is not seasonal okay so definitely understand that concept right um we usually we usually work with people you know we work with everybody right from the, the, the small joe schmo as i call them to the big guy out there we work with everybody we don't discriminate right um that still doesn't take away from the fact that if you're going to do music just have the mindset. It costs money. Yeah. If you don't have the money to do the music, then don't do it. Yeah. Plain and simple. Don't do it as harsh and horrible as it sounds. Don't do it. Yeah. I hate to see, cause you know, we get it a lot. You get a lot of content that was clearly rushed down for the season right. or just clearly rushed out. Yeah. And you could hear that it wasn't mastered correctly. It wasn't this and it wasn't that. And you can try to reach out to the artist because we have reached out to the artist a couple of times. You know, this doesn't sound right. Some of them would take it to heart and don't tell me about my, my, my product. I know how it is and so forth. So we got to the point where, you know, if you're paying us for the service, we'll pay, you know, we'll, we'll do it our, our job. But just know, you know, enter at your own risk. And I say that not that we don't care about your product. We definitely do care. But we try to offer the best advice possible based to everybody yeah. based on the experiences. Yeah. And the most I could say, and, and I will always stress this part, and now that I have the platform here, I'm going to say it. If you're an upcoming artist and you really, really want to do this, just know it takes money. And if you don't have the money, just hold off. I think the same thing. Find ways. I think the same thing could be said for DJs as well, too. Um, could the same thing be said for DJs? I mean... That's why I think it, it's it's easier to get involved in this at a younger age when you may not have all those responsibilities that you have right now as mm -hmm. opposed to trying to jump in at late. But at the same point in time, um, you guys have been doing this now via YouTube for how many years? This will make it, what, a decade now? You've been doing it? about a Almost, yeah, yeah, just about, yeah. <laughs> guys, 10 years 
to be able to reach that <laughs> 1 million subscribers part. So at the same point in time, I think you have to understand yourself, understand your challenges, and see how best you can navigate them, even without finances, to be able to do what you want to do and be realistic about your goals where that is concerned. So since you guys have hit the 1 million mark, has, has YouTube sent any little, nice little global whatever? Yes. God, the, yes. And you didn't bring it. It's big. It's big. You didn't bring it, you know, God. I didn't bring it, no. It's big. It's heavy. Pause. Uh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> anyway, um, it wasn't for topic of conversation, but you said it, and I saw comments in a group about it. So again, if anybody wants to comment on this, I'm willing to hear all the comments in the comment section, right? Mm -hmm. We are in 2020. Ten years ago, Palance was released, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Palance was released in 2010. So... The argument across the world has been, why are DJs still relying to play Palance at this point in time? What say you, Shan? Yes or no? Should we still be playing Palance or should Palance be retired with wherever else? Look, music is music. <laughs> music is music. Say this now, you know, right? you can't say this music is music. <laughs> music is music. And just, to, you know, let me just add that. The reason why they play Palance on that mainstream station is white people who don't know anything about soap, okay? So, and uh, any mainstream, if you go into a mainstream party where it's white people, I'm sorry to say, to sound racist, but hopefully I don't. When you go to those kind of parties, they don't know anything but the typical jump around the place, the rupees jump, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Palance, so that means dance that have, music, basically. So that dance music. So that means that we have, we are now saying, and it's not, listen, we, we don't want to sound racist because it's not that, but isn't that we are, we are now categorizing and we have, we have white people soca, that's what you're saying. <laughs> I wouldn't say that, I would say mainstream. I'll call it mainstream. That's so, a nice way so of putting Pal it, mainstream. Palance is mainstream in 20, 20, 20, 10 years later. <laughs> you know what it is? It's dance music. Well, it's I, dance music, agree, so that's what it is. I agree with that. I think that, and I say it's dance music because anything that has a dance to it tends to resonate more, and it goes further. A lot of people yeah, like those kind of things. And because look, we in the Caribbean, we are accustomed to somebody telling us to do something: joke your girl, so wind up on she, so stab, frog back. You understand? That's it. Where, that's it. Where, <laughs> so we we are accustomed to this, right? So the fact mm -hmm. that there are a few of those songs that can be recognized internationally, because I always remember a friend of mine going on this Caribbean carnival cruise, and she sent me this video from the middle of the ocean with everybody doing the palance. And she was like, Exactly. We hate it on palance, but these people out here still dancing to Love palance. it. Yeah. yeah. Look, people still dancing to Dollar Wine, believe it or not. People still dancing to Who Let the Dogs Out. These are all, hate to say it, but well, I can't say hate to say it, love to say it. Yeah. Famous songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's only. They trickle in. You know what it is? Because we're diehard Soka fans and we have we know the history behind it. We know everything. We know stories behind it. Right. If you think about it, to a mainstream person, they just hear a dance song and they want to go with it. Look at Jerusalem. Look at how big that song got. Jerusalem. And it's a whole dance, right? It's a whole dance to it. And that song has taken off. Yeah. Maybe 20 years from now, I'll be like, I hate that song. Why are they playing it? But for now, it's pumping it. Everybody loves it. So the same thing with Palance. When it came out, everybody was pumping it. They loved it. You couldn't go to a fed without hearing it. So you got to give props to where props belong. Yeah, we have emotional feelings when it comes to this kind of thing. <laughs> so for a man who listens to Palance 10 years, it's like, duh. And then we had to blame the DJs to some extent. Eh? And I just say that because there's no one a guy building a good set but there's no other guy relying on one song right so mm -hmm. if they're building a good set and you include palance that is fine but there are some guys that just the car already get forward and they just go and drop palance because now nah, you understand but <laughs> I, I, that's a debate for different yeah. my my take on it is um know your crowd <laughs> so of course so, that's important so, that's a very important I, I, but i wouldn't i would say don't knock the music we're not we're not knocking the music and for everybody here especially the djs and shandy would understand where i say this there are certain places where we can't play parlance i don't know why <laughs> there's a hate for it i'll give you that i'll give you there's that i'll give you a that hate for it. i've gone parties and like men come up to the stage and say yo dj no nah. <laughs> <laughs> no. But that's what I'm telling you. It's diehard soca fans who no, don't want to hear it. Mikey, don't, that's what it is. Mikey, do not they don't want to hear it. Me, do not blame me. Do not blame me. Not, <laughs> if people don't want to hear this song, what I go and do? I mean, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But, but anyway, um, mm -hmm. bouncing off a of palance into another argument that has been across the the the, the soca spectrum for so long, um, 
is in terms of soca music getting a Grammy, right? I have my personal oh. opinions about soca and Grammy, um, but I would really like to get your take on probably how far do you think soca music is from actually being recognized on a Grammy award level? Mm. <laughs> we have a ways to go. We have a ways to go. Yeah. We are not even recognized as a genre. Right. How can we expect to receive a Grammy if people still consider our music as reggae music or world music and they don't even know what the genre is? Yeah. In order in order to get a Grammy, you have to have a genre right. and people don't know who we are. Right. So we still have a ways to go. But do you think that that's... I can't, I can't calculate, like I can't give a, a, a date or a time. Right. I think we still have a time. I think I tell people we've passed the infancy stage of Soka. I think right now we're in our toddler stage. And then right. hopefully we'll get to the adolescent stage. And maybe by the adolescent stage, we'll be recognized. More and more people are starting to cling and understand the history behind Soka. But there's also a big division within Soka itself. So how can we expect to go further if there's no unity? That's the next thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, let me get to some of your comments here. I'm um, uh, seeing, uh, well, where's my stag? That's a good, that's a good name. Huh? She's doing <laughs> the for that. Um, I am Kern Scott saying very far. Soka needs to set a new trend. Um, we need to make Soka music that reaches the world and not just wine and joke and jam, which I also agree with as well, too. Um, mm -hmm. And he is saying, turn me on from St. Vincent. So for whatever reason, for Vincent, if you're playing turn me on right now, that is on the same level as Palace. So although I still love that tune. And I've seen somebody about originality. Somebody saying, Pak Ju saying, originality and culture. Um, which is the truth. I think that right now, um, carnival culture has taken off in a great way across the world. But I do think that and as, as always, use the rush hour example. And my rush hour example is this, right? There's a there's a scene in mm -hmm. rush hour where um, Chris Tucker tells Jackie Chan, "Follow the rich white man," right? So <laughs> my take is that when it comes down to anything in this life, you have to follow the money. And I think at mm -hmm. this point in time, um, corporate companies, um, Fortune 500 companies, all these big execs, whatever, whatnot, need to understand the financial benefits that come with carnival culture. Um, and by extension, soccer, before the genre could be able to take off in the way that's supposed to, to be recognized as something that can win a Grammy. Do you agree with that as well, too? I agree with that. Um, what I was also going to add also was the core numbers. We also have to build up our numbers. Yeah. Um, as you pointed out, execs look at numbers. And if they see a huge following in a huge wave, it br brings inquiry. If you think about it now, look at flights going to carnivals now. Flights going to certain carnivals used to be so cheap. Cheap, yeah. And now they've gotten so expensive because airlines have learned what carnival is. They know the peak times as to when people want to go down. They know what this festival is about. Yeah. So if we keep increasing our following as to... to the music itself into carnival itself yeah then we can see some kind of hope for the grammys in a certain point in time but in order for that to occur people have to also understand what soca is soca has to be a recognized genre and then we can go from there yeah. i would just say we have to continue to share reshare and get the music out there and get our culture out there but why do you think and you know I, we were having this conversation with pretty last week and just to let you guys know um this week i'm going to be working on getting all the creative collective conversations i've had to this point on youtube including the one with pretty last week and just for anybody who didn't look at that conversation pretty it's still on my instagram right now in my instagram tv videos i invite everybody to watch that conversation with pretty and pretty was stating that one of the things that he wants to really do is win a grammy and i can't take that away from any artist in particular who wants mm -hmm. that to be the, the be all goal of 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 what they produce music for but for whatever reason, I think that we still love soca seasonally. There are a lot of people that love soca seasonally. So 
you know, Carnival Monday and Tuesday, or for that whole two month period, um, you want to hear it right through. Ash Wednesday coming down, you ain't really want to hear it again. And though I know there'll be a lot of people here who do not subscribe to that, at the same point in time, there's a significant amount of people who only own the music at a particular time of the year, but don't own it for the entire year. Do you think that that's mm -hmm. one of the challenges that we have in getting the music out there in that level? That's a huge challenge. Yeah. A huge, huge challenge. As I stated before, it's important that people, people need to understand the concept of what the business aspect is in Soka. Yeah. A lot of people join, a lot of people say they want to be a singer, but don't understand the business aspect of it. Yeah. And understanding the business aspect is a huge factor. Yeah. Because it gets you out there and it allows you to do what you need to do as an artist. Yeah. There's so many nooks and crannies. And one main factor that um, I've encountered was or is, you know, a lot of people have managers who don't really understand mm. the business side. Mm. A lot of people have managers who are their significant other, who is a best friend, who is an auntie who don't understand anything about business. Right. And this is a huge business and it's important to understand the numbers. Yeah. It's an important to understand how to network. It's important to understand who to speak with, how to get yourself out there. Yeah. If you don't understand those things then how could you expect to go further? But I think that is because for many people, I'll, I'll, I'll openly say I've been guilty of this myself. I think that many people, and I'm not just talking about DJs here, I'm talking about, uh, and so artists, sorry, I'm talking about DJs and creatives in total. When you look at the core team of people, who I, I like to call with Groove Theory, the ecosystem of people that you're dealing with, you deal with people that you trust. So if your granny mm -hmm. is the one that helping you for your entire years, granny is going to be the one managing your career for whatever reason, right? And to be able mm -hmm. to break that relationship to go to somebody who might be on business might be a little bit challenging because you might not be as trustworthy that this person could take it to the next level. Not just that, but you and I have seen many movies out there where there is this one guy who has this talent and, you know, his family was with him all the time and then he gets big and then some exec comes like, yo, I could take you from here to there. And he leaves <laughs> out his family and everybody talks and like, yo, when, when you were nothing, man, I was... We were here for you. <laughs> boy, is a sellout, boy. Is a... So, I mean... As a creative person, how does one deal with that? That That is a challenge in itself. No, but this is why I say, you know, it's 2020. All right, so you want Tanti and then, then to be a manager. That's fine. You trust them. That's perfectly fine. Right. But with that being said, you have to enable her, him or her with the tools. Correct. It's 2020. Read up on it. If you're not sure about what's the next steps to do, there's nothing wrong with Google search. How do you write a press release? And there's so many different examples of how to do that. Yeah. How do you gain your masters? And there's so many different examples of how you can get your masters. Yeah. You understand? It's 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 a it's not rocket science, put it that way. Yeah. Um, there's so many go ahead, go ahead. things out there for us. I was gonna say there's so many tools out there that we can utilize in order to get ourselves out there. Yeah. I just want to get to the comments because I said because I know it's so technical tonight. Um, where is my stag? And having to follow the music industry rules in the states um, that they were talking about winning a Grammy will come with artists having to sell their masters, um, which I, I will get back to because I want to hear Shandy's take on that. Um, I'm also seeing that there's no unity in the Soka family from Pan to Play. Um, find out why Calypso music of the olden days re reached so much people. The story and melody helped. That is from DJ Mikey International. Um, the music industry in the States will not give out awards um, without anything in stake, which is something we can also discuss as well, too. Um, Soka doesn't need a Grammy to say how good, but if Soka doesn't, does then Soka is grateful. I think that's what I'm saying here. Yeah? You'll have to forgive me because the light is right in my eye. That's okay. <laughs> um, the record label would get a huge chunk of the profits, though, which is the truth. That is, the and you see that with all genres. An artist who sing a song, um, and he thought his song obviously was the biggest thing in the world at the point in time. So he think he go and get a million, which he probably will get, but the record label is going to get like the 10 million. So you will get a million, you know, but the, the label is going to get 10 million. Um, a starter is getting the ISRC code for people's music 
um, that is the code name might be wrong. Yeah, I understand that. So yes, that is also as well as the truth. And let me just go to Ironclad says, but the sound of soca as a genre is meshing with other genres. Um, is that going to be a problem um, to basically put soca in the position to win a Grammy? Do you think so, um, Shandy? Oh, that's an interesting question. I, I honestly, right. I honestly, we label it as crossover music. Yeah, we, we I think, I think <laughs> this, this is what I will say. This is what I'll say. I'll put this out in universe. I think that Soka will probably win its first Grammy when it, the song is done with some artists and we're going to look at it as a crossover song. And then that, and then that person now is going to have to be the standard bearer to carry the information to the world of what Soka is because people know what Soka is right now. But at the same point in time, I still do think that a lot of work needs to be done into, into getting it into the right ears, as we were talking about, for the rich white man, right? For the rich white man. So mm -hmm. it has to get into the right, the right ears of, of people who are going to be able to put money into it, because that is really where it boils mm -hmm. down to. And then all the artists, and it, it is the cycle, when the money starts to go into it, then the other islands and the other countries are going to realize, hey, we could start to make money from this, and then they're going to invest into their people. And then when they start investing into their people, then the individuals right now who are having challenges to be able to do the music because they don't have the resources so themselves are going to have the resources. But I still go back to the original point that I think, and I'm going to make this and stress this point, we have to defend soccer for the entire year. We can't just defend mm -hmm. it of St. Lucia Carnival, Grenada Carnival, wherever Carnival, and then after they don't defend it at all because, you know, soccer's mess only on the road. It has to be defended for the, for the entire year. You want to say something? Can, yeah, I wanted to say something. I was going to say this time right now, 2020, has forced people to understand that concept that we can't keep soccer seasonal. So also what I've also noticed, me personally, do not take this as Julian's promos. This is Shandy's. That's right. um, <laughs> what I've noticed what's been coming in, it's more a crossoverish kind of vibe, kind of soca coming in. It's it's like it has a pop feel to it. Right. I hate these subgenres. I hate the subgenres, yeah. you know, pop soca, afro soca. I hate that. Okay. Soca is soca. What long time but, was, um, <laughs> um the, the soca EDM or what was um Caribbean <laughs> electronic dance soca? Whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. I hate it. it was so many you see what it is with all these subgenres, we're not gonna get that's another problem that, that prevents us from getting recognized because everybody wants to come up with their own subgenre in hopes that it will burst into something bigger and it doesn't. Right. Some cases it goes oh so far, but it doesn't get to where it needs to go. Right. We need the numbers. Point blank, in order for us to get recognized for anything, we need the numbers. In order to get those numbers, we need that unification. We need people to go out and reshare the music Island pop. and say, look. <laughs> Island pop. How is it? Island yeah, pop. Island Pop. Yes, you're right. Island Pop. <laughs> And it's still, believe it or not, it's flipped. The name is not Island Pop anymore. Some people call it Pop Soca. Pop Soca now. Pop Soca. That's what I'm getting now. Pop Soca. I'm getting Pop Soca. Yeah. And, and, but that's where you're getting a lot now, honestly speaking. You're getting more of a pop kind of vibe. But if you ask me, I consider it all Soca. Yeah. The most I would change, of course, I know the BPMs are different. So the most I would give it is Raga Soca or Raga slash Groovy versus the Power Soca. Right. <laughs> that's that's as far as I'll go. And I see that's as far as I'll go. And I see where is my stock saying at this time TikTok TikTok will help artists, which is the truth, you know. Um, mm -hmm. but I think again that still means that you have to curate your content for the social media that you're using. So it could be reshared so people can understand what's going on. That is the important thing is to get the numbers up. Correct. The numbers is key. Correct. Correct. Now I have two more things I want to cover before we wrap up for the night. Um, so I go and call some names here. And if I'm missing out any names, I'm waiting for everybody in the comments to add names in the chat, right? Destra, Fair and Lions, Alison Hines, Nadia Batson, Patrice Roberts, Nyla Blackman, Nessa Preppy, Jadel. That's it. I raise those names because, and again, if I'm missing anybody, please forgive me, right? Um, cause I just wanted to think off the top of my head at the point in time. At this point in time, one could argue that the names that I just called um, are the main females right now that are driving the conversation where Soka is concerned. From a female perspective, right? Now, we just had the first 
um, female of, of, like, how do I like to say it? The first female, the first black female of, of East End. <laughs> Look, we, we, we. Black we, and we, brown community. No, no, no. Let me put it like a trend. Let me put it like a trend, the Gonian person. We had the first Dogla, right? Who had just been <laughs> named as the Vice President of the United States of America. Of America. Right? Mm -hmm. It means then that women are still, um, still trying to break that glass ceiling when it comes down to, to certain fields, right? Do you think that females are underrepresented in soccer? Because I call those names, but if you really think about it, compared to their male counterparts and compared to any male artist, we could call a million names in soccer from now till whenever. But as I said, I know I could be missing a couple, and this is not taking away from those that have been grinding in the background, but they're not in the foreground. You understand? Mm -hmm. So the truth in fact is that Destra used to have her concert on Wednesday and that didn't really do too well because the numbers didn't pick up as much as it was supposed to. Does that take away from mm -hmm. Destra's talent as an artist? No, it does not. But the bottom line is that you do see where um, the, the rules for soca, if, if you want to call it that, I don't want to say rules, but that's your word I'll, I'll try to throw serene right now, that the way it applies to males is totally different from females. So do you think that females right now are underrepresented in soca, and why do you think that's the case? Yes. Right. We are. We are. I say we because I'm in the back end of it. I'm not in the front, but I'm in the back. Pause. Um, <laughs> and... Um, for me personally, it's a struggle. As a woman within soca music, it is a huge struggle. Right. I would take it as to get recognized as a as a human being, it's a big struggle. Huh. Because people automatically take you as a joke. That's or you're just a groupie, um, sex sells. It's oh, the stories you hear is heartbreaking. Um, that's powerful. It's, it's heartbreaking. People don't take you serious and not only in the front end, but the back end. And I'll continuously stress that when I first started this, I started doing Julian's promos, not only as a host, but I also used to go into the parties and I used to do coverage. Right. And from that point on, this is like, um, mid two thousands, early to mid two thousands. Yeah. And when I did it, people didn't take me serious. Right. People just like, oh, you're just trying to get into the Fed for free. But then when they saw the coverage I was bringing and it was like, oh, you know, can you come back to the next event? Yeah. I had to work twice as hard to get my name recognized, to get my face recognized, to be understood, um, to take it a next step further. I manage DJs. Right. When I first started managing the DJs that I managed, no one took me seriously. They thought I was a groupie. It was just like, who you booming in this team? And it's a constant disrespect that you have to do. So not only as a woman that you have to step forward to say, take me seriously. You also have to have a strong backbone. You have to have a strong voice. You have to have the tools to surround you and make sure that you're surrounded with the correct ecosystem, as you pointed out. Right. And that ecosystem could be a good manager. It could be a good life partner. It could be a good family friend, somebody you need different outlets for different varieties of things. Right. The women that we have here within Soka, they have to push so many of them still have to push elbows to get recognized. In certain cases, they have to, to make certain sacrifices. I'm not going to mention what they are, yeah. but I've heard stories where they've gone the extra mile to get recognized. So as a woman with an entertainment in general, it is a hard, yeah. hard thing. Yeah. Yeah. hard thing yeah. and i really give kudos to those women who are out there you know 2020 now i've seen a lot more women behind the camera i see a lot more women hosting interviews i see a lot more women being the producer as well as the manager out there so you know kudos for that i've had many women come up to me and say you know you were my inspiration me thinking no one's paying attention to me and a lot of them have come up to me and saying you've inspired me and i look up to you so much and i appreciate you because you've led the way you've put the torch out there for me to do what i need to do yeah. so you know to all the ladies out there that are listening that are out there as a female as a lady artist don't give up Find yourself a good manager, a manager who will take you seriously. And those are hard to come by as well, yeah. because nine out of 10, 
those managers, quote unquote managers, sometimes want to take it to the next level and you have to learn to pull back. If you see that it's going someplace you don't want it to go, don't be afraid to walk away. And you know, yeah, it's easier said than done, but don't be afraid to walk away. It just raised a point that was so powerful in itself um, that you were saying that sometimes you don't know who you are impacting by the things that you are doing. And I'm going to openly admit that sometimes in terms of doing this podcast itself, I sometimes wondering to myself, you know, will people really be inspired by the conversation? So just for everybody here, last week, Shandy and I was like, yo, well, I don't even think we're going to be here for like half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm looking at the time I'm like, whoa. It's 9.19. So we've been on for an hour and 20 minutes. We go and wrap up just now because we have things. To do. But the point I'm making is that I looked at your comments when you posted the image about doing this podcast tonight. And I saw one comment where somebody said, I love his show. You would not believe how much of a difference that made me feel at that point in time. Like it, it pushes you over the edge that you're inspired more to be able to do something, especially point in time when you think nobody's taking it to you on. So ladies and gentlemen, when you feel nobody watching what you're doing, somebody watching. Oh, they watching. I'll, like, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll shout out somebody inside the DJ, Katash trini that's living in london um i look at her stuff she probably doesn't know this but i look at her stuff i look at her um where is jardin which is a brand that she has and i just make mention to her because again you're really not sure who is out there looking and admiring your work even if it is they don't say that so that's important mm -hmm. the second point i wanted to raise and i want your input on this and anybody here could actually comment on that as well i think one of the reasons why we don't see more females in soca especially in the caribbean is because music and by extension some other creative fields are not looked at as serious and especially as a female if it is that you go and tell mommy well i want to sing soca she go and watch you like no you're going to be a doctor or a lawyer or whatever whatnot there will be mm -hmm. very few parents who would be supportive of what it is that you're doing it's already hard for fellas like guys we already have it hard but as a female I can only imagine and empathize because I can't say I knew it from experience, but I can only imagine and empathize how that, 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 that scrutiny that you would get from what you're wearing to how you're sung in to if you wear the same clothes this week, last week, into if you could whine, she can't whine, whatever, whatnot, that would impact your your ability because you had to have real belly as you rightly say you had to have real belly i say so somebody say look at terry lyons who is the monarch and is it true terry lyons who is the calypso monarch and just for noteworthy reasons i'm trying to get on this podcast as well mm -hmm. um as a calypso monarch having to go from soca into calypso and understanding the challenges that goes into the soca world i think that we in the caribbean are still very conservative when it comes down to that to to to, to soca and music so that's why i find mm -hmm. especially in some of the other islands like dominica um wells dominica and some other islands you're probably not going to be seeing um female acts that often because they still don't look at soca with a particular level of seriousness that they or music i should say creative music in the, in the level of seriousness that we probably look at it at, at, as do you, do you think that that may be the case um no. and just in case anybody is wondering because um for whatever reason that question that i posted as early any question answered how do you get your music on julian's promos for whatever reason it's it's still up on the screen i don't really know how to get it off um, so I'll try, but um, for whatever reason, Shandy is being blocked out partially by that. I don't, I don't know why. But anyway, mm. so, so Shandy, what's your take on that? Uh, do you really think that that could be a, a factor in it? I don't want to say yes. And I don't want to say no, because I'm not from different countries. But I could honestly say, in my opinion, this is Shandy again, not Julian's promo. Yeah, yeah. I have to stress this. Um, I just feel as a woman within the Caribbean we're sexualized right so off the bat we're sexualized uh we're, we come from a society where we are supposed to just stay in the kitchen and not go past that right and i think that also is a huge barrier that prevents us from being taken seriously as well right yes it's a male dominant profession music is considered a profession for some people because some in some countries it's the bread and butter for some people correct so I think people take it seriously. Countries take it seriously. 
they they some people sponsor some countries sponsor their their artists to go to different events. Yeah. So it is taken seriously as a profession to have a woman behind that seat. It's a difficult thing sometimes. Like I said, we're mostly known or seen sexually and nothing past that and that bothers me to my core. Yeah. Like you have to work twice as hard to be recognized as a human being, yeah. to be recognized with a brain to be recognized, you know, my clothes, the clothes that I wear should not determine who I am or where I should go in the next steps forward. It should be what I offer from my heart, my head and my voice. If I'm an artist right. and even if I'm not an artist, if I'm from the back end as a producer, my voice should matter. It shouldn't be just because I don't have testosterone and a long schlong automatically. I'm not recognized as somebody. A long what? <laughs> don't, I'm not repeating that. <laughs> I love sugar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love sugar. You get my point. You get my and I wanna, you know, I wanna shout out. You mentioned a lot of Trinidadian artists. There are plenty of female artists throughout the Caribbean. So I just wanna shout out to my girls out there in St. Vincent, to the ones in Barbados, to Dominica. You know, those ladies are also out there that should be getting recognized recognition as well. I mean, there's one artist who People have tend to forget, but she still sings. Zola's out there. Zola's still out there. Right, right. And, but, Sita is from St. Vincent. Sita does reggae, and I think she's phenomenal. I love her range. She goes. She could do soca. She could do reggae. She, I, I love. <laughs> I, I'm sorry for laughing, at her, but I've seen people saying IG after dark now because I long schlong. So. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> All of a sudden, all of a sudden, this is taking such a thing I did not expect. But I mean, I, I mentioned the artists that I did before, only for the mm -hmm. fact that they are the leading voices right now. So yes, Zola. No, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I'm not gonna knock those. I'm not gonna knock you on that look, one. One hundred percent. Look, Fire Impress does a live like every Tuesday or something like that. You understand? So there are still she does. there are still female artists that are doing the work. But the truth and fact is, if you compare them, especially what we would call the artists who are not as prominent right now, compared to the not as prominent male artists, the not as prominent male artist still gets more play than the female. Yes, they do. And, they and do. I, mean, I, I, I do understand the challenge of it, as I said, from an empathetic level. That is why I'm going to put this as a shameless plug again next week, Wednesday. Um, I'm making sure to have the four females, the entrepreneurs, the creative entrepreneurs for that conversation. Because I think it's important that everybody tunes in next week, Wednesday, which is the 18th, to the entrepreneurs conversation on my Facebook at Shamari KRL, uh, where we're going to get into a lot of these little nitty gritty issues that we were talking about here. Um, I'm seeing some people saying um, Cor Cordell from Visual. That's I'm my trying boom. to record more. <laughs> I'm, uh, all right. I'm trying to record more <laughs> female artists, but they're trying to compete with the men. Oh my goodness. You understand? No, um, yes, Sita. Hold on, Shandy. You're bringing up. You're bringing up. Your internet is bringing up. Shandy? Can you hear me now? I think we're lost. I think we're losing Shandy. Can you hear me? I'm hearing you, but you're breaking up quite a bit. Okay, um, am I still breaking up? In and yeah, a little bit more present though. What were you saying just now? Sorry. No, I was saying I understand where he's coming from in the sense that I wouldn't even say it's a competition. It's more like just trying to get recognized. But even in trying to get recognized, I think there would be the need to compete because you want to be the first. <laughs> you know, and that is that is really a challenge. It, it, it again goes back to what we were talking about, about the unity in soccer, right? Mm -hmm. And unity in not just soccer, let me not say soccer, but entertainment in total, you know, because in general. how do you compete but collaborate at the same time, right? How do you make sure that you offer something different to everybody else, but at the same point in time, you can collaborate with individuals to help build yourself as, as a creative mind. That is a challenge I think um, both sexes go through, but I think for females, it could be harder. Because it's twice as hard. It's twice as hard because you have to put out more to prove yourself more. So that is one of the reasons why I told myself, yo, we need to have a conversation with four creative mind females who are going through these struggles because I do believe that 
many things that we get away with, you guys with the long strong or weapon. <laughs> Right. Don't quote that. Don't quote that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Long, strong, long, strong. I think that there are some things that we get away with that, you know, as a female, it, it's not that simple. And then even if it is that you try to do that, you're going to be looked at differently. But again, um, I'm going to save all those questions for next week. Um, the last point I want to get into quickly before United is done. And I see in um, quarter saying that you and T-Mobile. So I, I do already know. AT&T. Thank what? you very much. AT&T. AT&T. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, obviously, soca music is growing right now. And I always make this point that it's so challenging for individuals who are not from the Caribbean to be able to break into the Caribbean to, be, to, to make an impact on soca, right? Because even when it comes down to Trinidad and Tobago, um, it is already challenging as it is for somebody who is not Trinidadian to break into to Carnival and, and, and soca in Trinidad and Tobago. Why do you think we have not seen more North American or U.S.-based artists outside of the ones that we know already, right? The guys have, have mm -hmm. established themselves and living in the States. But why do you think that we have not been able to see artists right now develop coming from Brooklyn, Jersey, wherever in the States to be able to sing soca or break into the Caribbean to kind of reintroduce it back into where they live at this point in time? I mean, you could say it has happened. Look at Lyrical. Lyrical, Lyrical even though he's Trinidadian, he's based in New York, well, not Atlanta, but he's broken through. He's broken that barrier. It's just a matter of getting that correct vibe, that, that song out there to push yourself further. It's possible. Yeah. It's not like it's not impossible. It is possible. It's few and far between. And honestly speaking, I can't give an answer as to why it happens. It just happens. That's just how it is. Yeah, yeah. I see Miss Chrissy, my friend from Grenada, saying there needs to be more support for female singers. Yes. However, songs need to be on point also. Big Girl Now, does that get... That, that, yeah, that still gets play. Big Girl, Big Girl mm -hmm. Now gets play. But I, it, it, it's, it's a balance. Uh, that, that is why I tell everybody, life is a balance. I think the balance has to be stretched across the board. Um, but I do admit that the challenge for the female artist and the female creative is much more than the male. You know, and um, that is something I really want to learn to understand because that is what this platform is about now, understanding from everybody's point of view the challenges that they have. Um, are artists from the States representing Soka looked at as the same artist born and raised in Trinidad and Tobago and other islands? That's actually no. a good comment. That's a very, very good comment from where... They're honestly not. Yeah. They're honestly not. Yeah, yeah, I agree. With They're honestly not. They're not. Unfortunately, and and... That it, it goes back to, I think, a statement that was made previously. In order to get recognized, you have to come outside of that bubble. Yeah. And once you get recognized there, then everybody will start clinging to you and say, all right, you, you, you made it. We'll work with you. Yeah. I don't know why that happens. I can't give a science to that. But unfortunately, that's what really happens. That's just how it goes. And the funny thing about it is that in, in the Caribbean, especially in some of the other islands, um, sometimes to get the support to do music, is far less than what you would get probably out in a much more developed country. But mm -hmm. you would be accepted faster. Like, is because even in the Julian's promos blasts, I see a lot of artists that I don't know, some of which I assume are living in the States. And um, they still probably will not get as much love in the Caribbean as, as much as if I sing from here and it's sent out there. Is that a, a right assumption to make? Yeah, you're probably right about that. I see somebody even wrote, Miss Chrissy said, there's a view of authenticity, unfortunately, which I agree with that. It, I guess with that being said, if you're not living there, and some people, some artists who are from here tend to go back home thinking that that will also help the situation. Yeah. You know, if I, if I link back up with my old people, they'll recognize me, they'll get it out there. Some cases that still doesn't work either. Yeah. And that person is born in that country, grew up in this area, and they're still not being recognized as being from there. Yeah. So I mean, I don't I don't even know if authenticity really counts at this point in time if you really think about that either. Yeah. Yeah. So all right. So before we wrap up, um, I just want you to let everybody know finally, because I saw some DJs asking about that earlier and one or two artists I'm, I believe were asking about that earlier in terms of how do they connect with Julian's promotions um to be able to get their content out there. 
I saw somebody ask about a price, but I'm going to leave you guys to deal with that in the personal emails and, and DMs. Um, but in terms of getting the music um, on Julian's promotions, um, how does one go about doing that? You can email us at julianspromos at gmail.com. Right. Uh, or you can inbox me on Instagram at Shandy Media. Yes, please. And please can take sure, it from there. <laughs> make sure and follow Shandy Media on Instagram. C H A N D Y Media on Instagram, please. Yes. Please. Yes. Continue. Yes. Sorry, you can follow follow me there because I, I get the Instagram requests as well where people inquire about the music. Um, and you can also subscribe to our pages on YouTube, as I mentioned before, which is Julian's Promos on YouTube. And you can also subscribe via our website which is julianspromos.com and there's a subscription area you fill out the questionnaire and bada bing bada bang you're in there bada bing bada bang yes <laughs> <laughs> yes i'm telling you first of all we went with with, with um with long Sh what is was long strong or wrong? stop repeating that i no, shouldn't have said that no, <laughs> no, no, no. That, you have at least when well, it was titty people before but you have people like here say long strong and if it is that i have a long strong that is what they say <laughs> <Only> thing, <man. laughs> I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get in trouble. I'm gonna get in so much trouble. <laughs> oh God, there's yes, that. This, this IG, IG after dark, man. We could say these things, you know. No, no, but anyway, no. I just want to shout out even, before I go. Um, I, I not to cut you. Sorry, I saw my my sister in the entertainment industry, industry which is Nikki G, the voice. I want to shout her out. I just saw her there as well. Um, we both that that's my backbone there, backbone within the industry. <clears throat> Excuse me. We've been through it from the beginning and still here. Um, so yeah, she, she tears my 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 tears literally when it comes to this business. So yeah, right, right, yeah. Um, Shandy, look, I first of all want to thank you greatly, not just for this, um, but now my personal story as well. And just now, I see somebody asking a question. I don't want to, I don't want to, um, yeah, actually, I want to, I want to get to this question quickly. Somebody is asking, why does the download links expire after two to three months? Um, we encourage everybody to get the music as quickly as possible. If you do have questions and you do require a song, you can email us and we still provide it to you. But each each link has a, a expiration date with all these these subscriptions. They all have a expiration date. That's just how the system works. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you guys something. Uh, as I said from the beginning of this conversation, um, a couple of months ago when I came up with the concept of the creative collective, I had all the equipment and everything stashed to him here for at least two months. And um, I of myself was facing the kind of mental and emotional challenges that go with COVID-19. So for me, it was a challenge to actually pick up myself and motivate myself to start doing this because I felt like, who really wants to sit down and hear these kind of stories now, <laughs> right? But funny enough, I called Shandy. It was, a, it was a random night I called Shandy. And Shandy spoke to me at that point in time and said, yo, you pick up and do you because at the end of the day, if somebody else does what you want to do now, you're going to regret it. And I believe in you and I believe in your capacity to be able to do this. And I want to say publicly that that conversation was actually one of the main conversations that put me over the hurdle at the point in time when I was facing the challenges of starting this entire podcast. So um, I do have my core network of people in the background that I love dearly because they're the ones that have been supporting me. They're the ones that went to me to buy the lighting and whatever, whatnot. But at the same point, I have to give props to individuals in the smallest fashion who do the slightest things that actually help to push you over the hurdle. And you are definitely, you have been that person to me, especially when it comes down to it. So I really, really do appreciate it. Thank you. I really <laughs> appreciate it. And I mean, it's, this has been something that's been on my mind to do for ages. But at the same point in time, it's good to know that there are individuals that could still encourage you when you don't feel encouraged, you know? And I think that that is something very, very important. And um, that is one of the reasons why, especially when it came down to this conversation, I felt it was important to have, not just from Julian's promotions, but for you being the first female, as I was told before. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, on, on, on the Creative Collective podcast. So I want to thank you for being the um the on top boss, right? Because as I said, that thank you. <laughs> I love that job. <laughs> on top boss, 
and in some other place when they we <laughs> just this long strong or long throng or whatever we were discussing <laughs> it but I, on a real though, I really want to thank you for the time tonight. I want to thank you for the information that you supplied about the artists, the entertainment industry, about Julian's promotions, about you guys reaching 1 million. Um, congratulations on reaching 1 million plus subscribers, which is a big accomplishment. And you and I will definitely be in touch um, over the next couple of weeks. All right? Thank you. All right, thank Take you. Take care, everybody. All right. Take care. Woo!